today we're going to do a little bit of a fun um, project. Um, first we're going to detangle this wig and make it nice and smooth like I did just previously on that last tutorial. And then also we're going to show you how to put extensions in. Um, see how these are nice and straight? Whereas in this wig is curly. So I'm going to explain to you how to curl synthetic hair and then um, apply them correctly into a wig. So to detangle a wig that is curly, you're going to do the same process that I've shown before. You're going to get a wide tooth comb and a fine tooth comb. And then you're going to make sure that you have some type of conditioner. Um, first apply the conditioner um, around the entire wig, starting from the end and then working your way up. And I like to do that pretty liberally throughout the whole wig, especially because this one's really tangled. Um, once you've done that to the whole wig, then you're going to let it sit for a couple of minutes. I say about 5 to 20 minutes, depending on how tangled it is. So you just really want to get those ends really well and then just work your way up. This is a leave-in conditioner, so it's a restore. Um, you can use it when it's wet. You can use it on it when it's dry, whatever you need. Um, so once I have applied that entirely to the wig, then I'm going to start taking my wide tooth comb. Because it's a curly wig, you don't want to use your fine tooth comb too much. Um, a, wide tooth comb is a wide tooth comb is going to allow that curl to stay intact. So I'll work on that, and then I'll show you a little bit about the results. Also, behind the wig, where the... Where the um, neck is touching, that gets a lot of matting. So basically underneath the wig, um, you'll really want to make sure that's conditioned really well. Um, because it's rubbed back and forth on our neck or if we're wearing like a collar, um, that hair gets tangled really easily. So you want to make sure that you don't ignore that area. Okay, now that I've applied my leave-in conditioner, I'm just going to let that sit for like I said, probably about five minutes to ten minutes on this wig because it's not terrible. Um, and then I'm going to come back and take my white tooth comb through it to release those tangles. Now that that condition ha conditioner has set for quite some time, now what you'll want to do is you'll want to get your hair into some sections. Um, I probably will do this one since it's a long wig, extremely long, um, four sections. So you take a section here. You take your wide tooth comb and you start here at the tip and you just kind of get those tangles out. You don't want to go um, and get every little snarl out just enough to where that comb can work its way through um, and then you work your way up. That's going to help keep it stay curly and prevent from pulling on the hair. Something like this is going to take quite some time. And you can always go back and put a little bit more conditioner on it if you need to. You'll just work through each section. Like I said, it takes some time. Um, but you can start to see, like it's compared to this side, where it's all pieced and matted together. Now this side's starting to flow a lot more naturally and softer. Um, but it's still keeping that curl intact. That's the benefit of using this type of brush. And that conditioner also helps just um, keep the curl as well. So if you have a curly wig, don't be afraid to brush it. Um, just use a wide tooth comb and keep it conditioned, and that curl will stay. You might lose a little bit of hair, but that's okay. Um, that hair is just the hair that's tangled in there. So I'll keep working on this, and then um, I'll show you the results once I've got it completely combed out. But this is basically the technique and process that we'll be doing um, until the entire wig is nice and smooth. Right, so we've got it all combed out here. You can see it looks a lot more smoother, um, less tangled. Um, now what I'm going to do is, you can see that the curl is a little more wavy, and we want it to be a little bit more ringlety, such as this right here. Um, so how I do that... Um, is you take just sections here, you just get the ends sprayed with your conditioner, you take your fine tooth brush, just brush that conditioner into the ends, um, since we got all the tangles out, this isn't pulling on that curl, 
Um, and then you just take the, the piece here and you just curl it back. Give it a little bit of um, weight off of it. And you just go on and do that throughout the remainder of the wig. Um, so we'll show you a couple more of those and then we'll show you how it looks in the end. We're also going to put some extensions in on this wig. Um, the individual wanted it to have some green extensions for a costume, and so that's what we're going to go ahead and do after we get the curl revised back to the actual wig. Now this will only work, this technique will only work with wigs that were naturally curly to start with. Um, so say that this was a completely straight wig and we wanted it to have curls, um, you'd have to go about that a completely different way. But because this wig already had its curls, this is just um, putting that bounce back into it, um, creating that ringlet appearance. Versus this soft wave, um, it's going to be a little bit more like this, and it'll look a little nicer once it's all done. But right now I'm just giving it that natural bounce. Alright, so you can see this is looking so much better from when it started out. Um, we have the individual curls instead of just a long and wavy wig. Um, my next thing that I'm going to do, I've brushed it, I've conditioned it, um, I've recurled it, and now I'm going to take my dry oil, and this is just going to get rid of any frizziness and allow it to continue to be in good condition. So you just go um, just really quick and nothing too heavy. For something this length, I'd probably do four squirts, and you should be good. So this will um, just relax over the night, and then I'll show you once I get the extensions in how it'll look. Oh, one more thing. You don't need to worry about putting um, hairspray on a curly wig to keep the curl. Um, these wigs are already pre-designed to stay curly, so hairspray is only going to... Um, put more gunk in it and kind of distress the fibers. So hairspray is not necessary. Now you can use it. Um, use something that is synthetic approved and um, say you wanted to have a little bit more volume on top or something like that. Hairspray is going to be great for that, but to actually give it the curl, the hairspray is not necessary. So, so it's the next day and this wig is the one that we just did yesterday and now I'm going to put the extensions in it. Um, this is the way that the extensions came, so you can see they're pretty straight. So putting them in something like this would look kind of obvious with it not having the curl. So what I'm going to instruct today on is how to give a little bit of curl. Um, I've done one here so far, and I'll kind of explain to you how I've done that. Um, this is synthetic hair, and so putting a high heat on it will melt it. So you don't want to do like a curling iron or anything like that. Um, what you actually will use is some hot curlers. I know these are kind of old school, but they work really well for what we're doing. So how you'll um, do it is you take a hot curler that's been on um, just at a medium heat. It hasn't been going for very long. Um, they're a little hot to the touch, but nothing to where it's going to burn my hand. Um, then you're going to take the extension and you're going to wrap it around this hot curler. I've found that the larger hot curlers work better, um, mainly because then it allows the majority of the hair, since it's a long extension, to receive the heat versus a small curler. So I'm just wrapping that around here, as you can see. And then you're going to take your little hot curler pins and just pin it on there just for security so it holds on to that heat. Again, it's a really low heat, um, but you will want to have it on there for a good amount of time. So I've pinned one just at the end and then one at the top um, just to let it stay on there. And then you'll let this sit for probably an hour. 
And um, after you've taken it off, it should have just a nice, loose, natural curl. Um, the way that we put these in the wigs, I'll show you in just a minute. First, I'm going to get all of these extensions to be curly, and then we'll go ahead and do that part. If you do end up curling your extension and not using it immediately, um, putting it in a loose pin curl like this is going to help hold that curl. Um, it's just going to prevent any weight pulling off on the curl. So you'll just want it in a loose pin curl such as this and then just let it sit like that on the desk or on your table or whatever you have. A lot of people are fearful of doing stuff like this because they don't want to ruin their wigs. Um, and that's why I'm here. So if, if you ever have something that you need done to your wig and you're not sure if it's possible or um, you're just a little apprehensive about it, bring it to me and um, I'll be able to do pretty much anything that you need. So again, I'm just taking that extension. Because this wig is not as curly as the, at the root than it is at the tip, I'm really not paying too much attention to the root but more so making sure those tips are nice and pin curled. Then you just want to make sure that the hair is laying nice on that heat and that it's not bulky and not touching the curler. So kind of like that. So this is the root here. I'm not too worried about getting a good curl there, but I do want here at the ends. Okay, so I've taken them off the hot curlers. Um, you can see how perfectly cute and curly that is. Um, so now we're going to take some of these and put them inside of the wig. I brought a little closer so you can see um, what I'm doing. Um, I've done one already. So what you're wanting to do is you're going to want to pull a piece of the wig hair out um, and then just part it so where you can see the weft. Um, once you can see the weft, all I did was I took the piece of the extension, unclamped it, threaded the weft through, and then clamped it down. But you want to make sure there's hair up here um, to disguise that weft so you're not seeing that after it's completely in. Um, I have 10 of these extensions, so I'm going to go and I'm going to make sure they're evenly distributed. Um, so I'll show you one right here right now. So I've done one down here, so I'm going to kind of come up here on the upper part of the wig take a portion of its hair out of the way. If you have one of these little clips or clamps, it makes it easier. If not, it's not necessary. Um, then you can see the weft right here. So you can see that right there. That's the mannequin's head. And then that little strip right there is what I'm gonna thread the clip onto, or the extension onto. So you take the extension and you just unclamp. So usually they come like this. You open it up. You thread that weft through that opening. So it's kind of hooking onto it. And then you want to make sure the hair is out of the way when you clamp it down. And all you do to clamp it down is just push it. It should buckle. Um, so then when I move this hair out of the way, it disguises that and you don't actually see the weft coming from the head, but you do see it down here. And I'll show you that. So you can see these green pieces coming through. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to all 10 pieces. Um, and then I'll show you the very end result.